If you like the lecture, don't forget to like and subscribe, so you will get notified for all the new lectures. As promised, 90% of this training will be practical. My objective is to show you the real skills you need to learn in a way that if tomorrow you start to work as an information security specialist, you will know what to do. You don't need to ask anyone for anything. You need you know exactly the right process and what are the job description or what are the uh, uh, tasks that the information security specialists need to do. But I'm going to start with some definitions. It may seem dry, but it will make a lot of uh, it, it will make a lot of sense once we start the implementation part or the practical part. So the first definition is the CIA triad. What is the CIA, which stands for Confidentiality, Integrity, Availability? How can you define security? Let me give you a small example. Assume that you have a laptop, and this laptop has a lot of critical and sensitive information on it. You have a lot of customer information, you have a lot of financial information, maybe you are working in a government or military, so you have very, very sensitive information there. And you have been requested to secure this laptop. What are you going to consider? Or even on personal basis, your smartphone that may include a lot of important contact, messages, financial information, credit card information. It's important to you on personal basis. How can you secure your smartphone? Are you going to put only password on it, which is a confidentiality part? Fine, it's a security. But what if you lost your phone? The, dat the data will be lost accordingly, so you lost it. So putting a password will not secure the information because when we are talking about security, we are not, we are not just talking about security against malicious hacker. We are, going, uh, we are talking about security uh, in a sense that anything that may lead to uh, 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 lost or... or, or uh, lose the information. So if you are not taking backup frequently and you lost the information, the result is the same. So you need to provide confidentiality in a way that only authorized people can access the information. You need to provide availability in a way that the information will always be available whenever it's needed. You should take backup, you should have a redundancy. You're gonna explain that practically with example and with the real documentation to show you how to do it. And you need also to provide integrity, making sure that critical information will not be changed or manipulated. So those are the three elements of security. And you're going to notice that we are talking about those uh, elements in different security documentation. So sometimes you're going to see that we are writing a plan and you're going to write in the plan that this plan will provide confidentiality or confidentiality and availability or this solution is to provide integrity. So it's always a justification to what you are doing. So please keep that in your mind and it will make a lot of sense in the upcoming lecture once we start the practical part. Then we have some common terms that sometimes some people are, may get confused about them. So I'm going to take the majors, one of them. Assets. Here we are not talking assets like uh, shares and tables and uh, desk and so on. We are talking about information assets. If you are a bank, if you are working as an information security specialist in a bank, the customer information with their financial transaction and their balance and so on, those are information assets. Do you know what will happen if the bank closes this information? You, want, you, you go one day to your bank and you ask them, what is my bank balance? And they said, sorry, we lost it. Do you know what you can do against this bank in this case? The cases that may be raised against this bank and how much he's going to lost, uh, he's going to have uh, lost his reputation and lost money and so on because of that. So here we are talking about information assets and it may have different value. Like if you are working in the military, the information that they have, this is national security information. 
it's priceless. It's, it's, it's not something that you can afford to lose. If you are working in a bank, also those are very, very critical information. So this is what we are talking, or this is what we are referring to assets. Not the physical assets, but the information assets. And next lecture, we're going to explain how can you identify your organization assets practically. Then we have like three terminology. I will not go through all of them, but the things that you need to be aware of. First, the concept of vulnerability. What is a vulnerability? Vulnerability is a weakness. It's not an attack. It's, not, it's a weakness. So, for instance, my computer doesn't have an antivirus. This is a vulnerability. You are not doing a regular maintenance to your car. This is a vulnerability. And so on and so forth. While related to this concept, vulnerability, you have another concept. It's called threat. What is a threat? Threats, it's what could go wrong. So, in the first example, a computer without an, without, uh, an antivirus, it's a vulnerability. Now, what could go wrong because of that? You may get infected with a virus or a ransomware. This is a threat. Your car, you are not providing maintenance to your car. This is a vulnerability. What could go wrong? You may do an accident. Something may happen to the car. This is a threat. Okay. This is important because you're going to learn later on how to calculate that and end up with numbers, showing them to the management. Okay. Then we have the risk, which is the main concept in security. Some people define risk as a vulnerability or as a threat. No, risk is a complete different uh, definition. Risk is the result of what the result of because of the problem or what went wrong. What will happen? So let's get back to our example. I have my laptop. It doesn't have an antivirus. This is a vulnerability. Laptop with no antivirus. The threat, I may get infected with a virus or ransomware or any kind of malicious software. This is a threat. The result of that will be losing the company information. Uh, my information get exposed. Losing money. This is the risk. So the risk is the result of the threat that uh, get advantage of a vulnerability. It's important to understand the concept and don't get confused between threat and risk. Some people think like a virus uh, uh, attack computer, this is a risk. No, this is a threat. The risk will be what will be after that, the loss of the information or leak of information and so on. And as I told you, as an information security professional or specialist, you need to calculate that because you're going to talk to the management, show them in numbers. We have this vulnerability, we have this threat, we have this risk, this may cause the company 100,000 and this may cause the company 1 million. And by doing that, you can identify the budget that you need to spend on your organization to uh, uh, become secure. So it's very, very important. Now. A very important point before I move in, which is a vulnerability not necessarily have a threat. So I'll give you a small example. What if I have a laptop without an antivirus? It's a vulnerability. I just keep saying that, right? But what if my computer is not connected to the internet? I'm not using any USB or external hard drive. So I will not get infected with an, uh, a virus. No way I can get infected with a virus because I'm not connecting anything to my computer and it's not connected to the internet. So it's a vulnerability, but it doesn't have any threat. So accordingly, I don't have to spend money uh, to secure that or to buy an antivirus because yes, I'm con I consider this a vulnerability, but nothing could go wrong. So it's important to understand that vulnerability not necessarily will have a threat. 